Fedora 40 was just released a few days ago, and I typically take a look at the new releases of Fedora. Typically, I take a look at the flagship edition of Fedora with the GNOME desktop environment. But Fedora does have some community spins, and this time around, I wanted to do things a little differently. I wanted to take a look at Fedora KDE 40 with the Plasma 6 desktop. So I've spun up a virtual machine here for Fedora KDE 40, and when you first boot in, of course, you get your live Plasma desktop environment. We get a little uh, welcome application here in the live environment, but I don't want to take a look at Fedora KDE 40 in the live environment. I want to run through a proper installation, so I'm going to go ahead and click the icon here, Install to Hard Drive. And it launches the familiar Fedora installer, the Anaconda installer. So at first we have to choose our language. My language is English, English US, that is correct. Let me go ahead and let me move my head out of the way so you guys can see the buttons here. I have continue here, so I'm just gonna click continue. And the next screen is keyboard, it's already set. Time and date, America, Chicago, that's the central time zone in the US, that is correct for me. So I don't actually need to do time and date. A network and host name, it's already connected to the ethernet. I really don't need to play with the networking. But these three items, uh, the installation destination, so where are we installing Fedora KDE 42, the root account, and the user creation, we need to run through these. So let's do the installation destination. Now it has found this 25 gig virtual hard drive in this virtual machine and I believe I have to actually click on it to select it. No, now it says no disk selected. So clicking on it unselects it. So it was automatically selected. This is always confusing every time I use this installer. I believe they're working on a new installer that hopefully will not have this annoying feature where it's, it's really hard to figure out if your drive is selected on this screen or not. But I'm going to go ahead and click done here in the top left, which is also a little confusing because you've got continue down here on some slides and then you had the done in the top left. Uh, it's, you know, the UI uh, experience here in the installer could be a little better but I've got the installation destination done now let's go ahead and create a root account so do we want to enable the root user or do we want to disable the root account now if you disable the root account I'm assuming that it would just uh, have sudo rather than you being able to issue over to a root user for me I'll just leave the default disable root account uh, that's fine and then we have our user creation. Let me go ahead and create my username. I'm going to call my user DT. His username will be DT. He does need to have administrative privileges. So he needs sudo privileges because there's not a root account to switch over to. So we definitely need uh, the DT user to have sudo privileges. We want to require a password to use this account. Absolutely. You should always have to enter a password to get into your computer for privacy reasons. Now let me create a strong and complicated password for the DT user and then confirm the strong and complicated password. And now let me click done once again in the top left corner. And it says uh, something about the password I'm assuming is a problem. It says press done anyway down here in the bottom left corner. And now I have to go back to the right and click done a second time just to confirm that I did want to use my strong and complicated password. And now I need to go to the bottom right corner to click the begin installation button. And away we go. This portion of the installation typically takes about five to 10 minutes on my machine. I'm gonna step away, I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee. I'll be back once Fedora KDE 40 has finished installing. And the installation has completed. Now in the bottom right hand corner, I get the message that Fedora is now successfully installed. Do you wanna go ahead and reboot your computer and then click finish installation? I'm assuming it will automatically reboot or do I need to do it? I guess I need to do it. Well, let me go ahead and reboot the system. And the machine reboots just fine, so I'm assuming the installation completed as expected. And we come to our login manager. Let me go ahead and log in. And when you first log in, of course, you get your welcome application here, the welcome center. And I'm assuming it's just going to tell us a little bit about KDE. Simple by default. You have the system settings application. You can go and adjust settings for KDE, yada, yada, yada. The next screen is powerful when needed. Plasma is an extremely feature rich environment designed to supercharge your productivity. Here is just a smattering of things it can do for you. And then it has, I guess, buttons to launch various applications such as vaults, activities, KDE Connect, KRunner, Overview, and get new stuff. Now the Overview, uh, if I click on it, uh, it doesn't launch the Overview, it just tells me how to get it. Meta W, so Super W gets me the desktop Overview. Yeah, if I hit Escape, I can get out of that. 
All right, well, let's continue on then. So let's go back to this and then click next. Manage software, of course, the Discover Software Center, and then share anonymous usage information. So do you want to enable telemetry? It's disabled by default, but if I want to, I can give them basic system information, or I can give them basic system information and usage statistics, or I can give them more detailed system info and basic usage statistics, or I can just give them pretty much everything. <laughs> I, I don't really care as far as telemetry. As long as they ask nicely about it, yeah, I'll turn it on. Get involved with the KDE project and then finally support your freedom. So uh, make a donation to help support the development of KDE. And then let's go ahead and close the welcome app. So some initial first impressions, of course, is Plasma 6 looks gorgeous, right? And this is just standard vanilla plasma 6 right uh, fedora really doesn't theme its desktops in any way right it's just essentially straight from the plasma devs that's what you get and that's the same with all their desktop environments and window manager spins right as, as they don't really customize their desktops one thing to note is the fact that fedora kde 40 ships plasma 6 by default is something you know that's not what a lot of other distributions do they don't ship things that were just released so early for example kubuntu which is ubuntu's kde spin kubuntu just had a new release a few days ago it's still on plasma f the 5 series right they haven't moved to plasma 6 yet why is that well the reason is Totally different philosophies between Ubuntu and Fedora. Ubuntu has LTS releases, and those releases a few days ago for Ubuntu and all the official flavors of Ubuntu, they're all long-term support releases. All of them get a minimum of three years of support. The flagship edition gets a, a five-year support cycle, and if you pay, you get up to, I think, 12 years of support now. That's an extremely long support cycle. So they don't want to ship anything that they don't know has been tested and is rock-solid stable. So that's Ubuntu. Fedora, this is a testing ground, right? So they're always bleeding edge. Whatever just came out, they're going to put that thing on the ISO because they don't have an LTS. The Fedora releases are every six months. You only get support for up to 12 or 13 months. It's like a year, right? So in a year, you need to be on a different version of Fedora anyway. So it's, again, it's basically a testing ground. You're kind of a beta tester. You're the guinea pig with Fedora. And if, you, know, you might like that. You might not. If you want something more, more stable. Fedora is probably not the right distribution for you. If you want something that's got the latest and greatest software, you'll probably feel right at home in Fedora. One of the cool things I like about Plasma 6, I do like the floating panel here at the bottom. And if I open the Dolphin File Manager here, when you make something full screen, the panel all of a sudden takes up 100% of the width of the screen and it's no longer floating, right? It butts up right against the edge of the screen like it should, you know, to maximize space. So that is really cool. If I unmaximize that window, you can see the panel becomes floating again. Now, I actually took a look at Plasma 6 a little bit. When it first came out, I went ahead and installed uh, KDE Neon and took a look at it. But, you know, what, some of the things that really impressed me was, you know, some of their work on the theming, the Breeze theme and the icons set and everything looks really nice right they've really cleaned up uh, the, just the look of KDE Plasma. Also, you know, performance wise, you know, everything is kind of snappy. Now I am in a virtual machine. And again, this is of course defaulting to Wayland, but everything just seems to work. Let's open up console with a K. So this is KDE's console. This is their terminal emulator. Now Fedora 40 came out about a week ago. So there are going to be some updates available. I'm not going to update the system, but I do want to see what kernel they shipped with. So if I do a uname dash R, you can see they're on kernel. 6.8.5, so a very recent kernel. And let's see how many packages are installed. If I do a DNF list installed, I should get a list of all the packages that are installed on the system. Now, if I up arrow and pipe that into WC, which is the word count program, and I give WC the dash L flag for a line count rather than a word count, it'll tell me how many lines of output were in this command dnf list installed there were 2133 lines of output that means there's 2133 packages installed on fedora kde 40. some other things i want to check let's do it where is flatpak is flatpak installed out of the box it is of course, if I do a where is Pipewire, Fedora has long been defaulting to Pipewire as its audio server. 
So let me close out the console and I'm not going to go through all the applications that are installed out of the box on KDE 40 because it's basically just your KDE suite of applications, right? But uh, some of the new things with this, I believe there is a new chat program called NeoChat. And what NeoChat is, this is a matrix client. So uh, I think that's pretty cool, especially the name Neo Matrix, right? <laughs> Pre pretty cool name for a matrix client. So this is a new part of the KDE suite of applications. If we take a look at the web browser, they are using Firefox for a web browser, which is nice. I really hate when spins of GNOME ship Epiphany as the browser, or spins of KDE ship Conqueror as the browser, because those browsers are terrible. Just ship Firefox like a normal distribution. So I'm happy that Firefox is here. This is Firefox 124.0.1. If I get back into the menu, there is an Office category. Do they install LibreOffice? They do. So they have the full LibreOffice suite, as well as a few KDE programs like KMail, KOrganizer, uh, ocular that is interesting they ship kmail which uh, kmail is probably okay but if you're going to go ahead and install a uh, mozilla firefox for your browser you would think they'd just go ahead and ship mozilla thunderbird as the email client too i think most people probably would prefer thunderbird to kmail let's go ahead and launch libreoffice writer which is the word processor for libreoffice let's see which version of libreoffice we're on Got the release notes here and you are running version 24.2 of LibreOffice or I could go to the help menu about LibreOffice. This is 24.2.2.1. So let's close that out. In the bottom panel down here we have quick launchers for the system settings, uh, the Discover Software Center, Nautilus, and Firefox. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Discover. Discover is not my favorite uh, software center but it's not the worst thing either but let's just check and see if it works. Let's try to install something. Is HTOP already installed? And it's a small program and if it's not installed I'll go ahead and install it. Or it's looking. I mean, a long time to look for HTOP. Maybe it's already installed. If I go to installed and search for HTOP and it's still looking. So yeah nothing found so I don't think it's installed. There are 602 updates. <laughs> wow. So this thing was really just released like a week ago and still 602 packages need to be updated. That's crazy. But still, why, why can't it find a standard program? You know what? Maybe, you know, the Discover Software Center and a lot of distributions, even though it's there, really, it's kind of flaky and buggy. Why don't I just open a terminal? and type HTOP to see if HTOP is not installed. Okay, sudo dnf install HTOP and click yes. And it's taking a second. Okay, and now let's run HTOP. Let's actually see what system resource usage looks like on this. Now I've opened several programs here in the last few minutes. Also, I can tell you right now, this uh, memory is using two and a half gigs of the six gigs of RAM I gave this machine. That's probably high because we have the updater going on. Uh, I move my head here. It's actually checking for package updates. That takes a ton, especially of CPU, but it also is probably using some RAM there. So just know that, you know, that uh, memory usage is probably uh, just high, a high reading. I probably should have updated this VM after I installed it. I didn't realize after just a few days we would already have 602 packages for updates. Let's check out some of the Plasma 6 wallpapers. If I right click on the desktop and I go to configure desktop and wallpaper, let's see. Now, of course, the Plasma wallpapers are always great, and of course, we've got all these old uh, versions of Plasma and their default uh, wallpapers. All of them fantastic. I love Plasma's wallpapers, and yet, yeah, I've seen all of these in the past. Let's try this one out here, this Patak. Yeah, that's not bad for a little abstract art. Or I want some nature. Uh, how about this mountain scape here? That's not bad either. Or about this one. One stands out. Yeah, the one flower or the yeah. <laughs> and one thing I want to do is I like dark themes. So let's go to the system settings. And let me go to appearance. I go down here to uh colors and themes. Well actually when you first open it, it defaults to uh the themes. Do you want the do a breeze or a breeze dark? Now I like breeze dark, so I'll click on that. Click apply, and now I should be using 
dark themes. Let's open the Dolphin File Manager. Yeah, I think the Breeze dark theme is just absolutely gorgeous. Of course, now that I've chosen a dark theme, I really need a light wallpaper. Because just for contrast, you know, typically dark themes look better with light wallpapers. Light themes look better with dark wallpapers. So let me choose a light wallpaper. You know, something like that would really stand out. Or even this black and white photo here. That would look very good as well. Or how about this one? Pastel Hills. Yeah, I could get down with that as well. That one's a very nice one as well. I, I need to stop looking at wallpapers. Folks get mad when I take a look at these distributions and I focus on the wallpapers. But honestly, the wallpapers, they do matter. So let me open a couple of programs. I'm going to open the file manager and then let me go to office and let me open uh, just something else. I'll open the document viewer, the PDF viewer. Now let me do the meta W for the desktop overview. Let's add a desktop. So add desktop to, and I just drag that to desktop to. Would it let me do that? It would. Very cool. And now I click on desktop to. All right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, super W makes that go away. Super W would bring that back. And I could just arrow over to get to desktop one or arrow back over to get to desktop two. I do like the desktop overview. Yeah, that's a pretty neat feature. And now that I've added that second desktop, you see I have this little desktop indicator down here in the panel as well, which we didn't have that when there was only one desktop because there was no need. But now we have, you know, we can quickly switch between the two desktops as well with the panel. And of course, we still have our window snapping. If I drag something to the left and I'm just checking the animations here. Now, again, this is a virtual machine using the virtual machine open source drivers. But the Wayland animations for me, they do, they do look very smooth, uh, like I have no problems with those animations. Let me open a new window and let's drag to the right. I mean, that does look very clean. And I get the quarter tiling there because I dragged it toward the top rather than the uh, center. And now I get the half snapping there. Yeah, let's close those out. Overall, I think Fedora KDE 40 with Plasma 6 uh, looks and feels fantastic, right? If you're a, a fan of Fedora, if you like Fedora as far as a base distribution and you're a KDE fan, especially and you want to try out the latest KDE Plasma 6, Fedora 40 KDE might just be the right distribution for you. Now, one thing to note is there have been talks within the Fedora community of eventually switching the flagship edition of Fedora from GNOME over to KDE Plasma. Now, I seriously doubt that that's actually going to happen just because Fedora has forever been so tied to GNOME and GNOME development. I doubt they would ever just drop GNOME entirely and make KDE Plasma their official desktop, but it wouldn't shock me if they didn't eventually at least support two official flavors, you know? That way you have GNOME Fedora as a official flavor, and then maybe you have the KDE Plasma version of Fedora also as a second alternative, but official flavor. So we could possibly see that in the future. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Game James, Matt, Paul, Steve, West, Arcotic, Armor, Dragon, Commander, Angry, Darloff, George, Lee, Matthew, Mythos, Nate, Urian, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul, Astri, Tian Run, Tools, Devler, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Fedora a KDE 40 would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.